Well, guys, there's been multiple different extensions to the lower Columbia spring Chinook season. If you haven't been, if you haven't been following it, there's been, I believe, three different extensions. We had the initial season, so that we're going to count that as one. Then we had an extension until Tuesday, and then just yesterday did we get another extension for another two days down there on the lower Columbia River. So I may be a little late to the game, but today we are going to go over and discuss three different ways, very effective methods that you can rig and set up your herring for spring Chinook salmon. Now, just because the lower Columbia is getting ready to close down does not mean that herring fishing is going out the window. Water temperature depicts a lot of herring fishing and also where you're at in the river system also depicts whether or not you're gonna be fishing herring as well. So there's a lot of herring fishing to be done for the rest of the year as well as moving into summer fish and fall fish and even the winter fish on the lake. So welcome back to another Walking on Water tutorial. We are gonna get right in to how to set up and effectively fish three different types of herring setups right now. All right guys, so first things first, what we're gonna do and what I do every single time before I get ready to go out on the water, I usually do it the night before, is I brine my herring and I'm actually getting ready to go out on Lake Coeur d'Alene tomorrow to fish for some landlocked Chinook salmon up here, some spring Chinook actually. And there's actually a bunch of reservoirs across America that have big king salmon. And so the goal is to hunt those down. But for now, we're just gonna simply go over how we're gonna brine our herring. So the first thing that we're gonna do is, I just use my old shaker jugs from the gym and we're gonna simply Use the Pro Cure Brine and Bite. This stuff has a lot of salt in it, a lot of bite stimulants. It's gonna firm up that bait, as well as we have some badass bait dyes by Pro Cure. I am a Pro Cure guy myself, but I do have some all in ones by Potsky as well. Just to, I did a Pro Cure versus Potsky video a long time ago, but these are this is an all in one, and Pro Cure makes them too. You simply just dump it in. And then you put your herring in it and you let it sit overnight. But I feel like I get a lot longer fish um, with my bait in the water system when I use a really heavy salt-based product like this Pro Cure right here. And then we're just going to add our own dye to it just like this. Of course, guys, the other ingredient is distilled water. You do not want to use tap water. There's uh, chlorine. There's fluoride in there. And as we all know... Chinook salmon smell parts per billion. They have a very extremely good sense of smell. And so to mitigate every, uh, to eliminate every single variable that's going to work against you, you've got to just take the extra step, go get distilled water, or go use river water. If you live right on the river and you're going to fish it the next day, go down, scoop some river water out, and then do this. So first thing we're going to do, we're just going to open our brine and bite. I have a one tablespoon right here, and I already know my mixture that I'm going to use. So it's the same every time. I just do six tablespoons for two cups of water. So six tablespoons for two cups of water. Super simple, super easy. And while I'm scooping these guys, if you guys enjoy these videos at all, comment down below just with a thumbs up. And if you don't mind, like, subscribe, and share them out to your friends and family. And guys, join the Walking on Water Private Fishing Facebook group as well as there's a Walking on Water business page over there too that we post a lot of our long form content on as well. So if you're a Facebook enjoyer, that's at your disposal as well. So that is our, I think our third scoop. I was talking so much. Five and then six, just like that, okay? And for good measure, I'm gonna do another half in each one. So that's six and a half scoops per two cups of water. So then we're gonna simply just grab a one cup like this. We're gonna grab our distilled water, slowly pour it. Okay, there's one. Doesn't have to be exactly two. There's two. Boom. Then we're gonna just put the second one in. Just like so, okay? Super simple, super easy. Anybody can do it, a monkey could do it. 
Then we have our blue die, just like so. You're gonna grab your badass bait die by Proke here, and you're just gonna tip it upside down and give it a nice little squeeze. Okay, that's gonna make some pretty blue bait. And then also we have our green, our chartreuse, and we're just gonna squirt a little squirt in there just like that, okay? Blues and greens have worked well for me in the past up here, and so that's what we're gonna run. Now we're just gonna take a stir stick, and we're gonna give it a nice little stir in there so we can mix all that dye and that brine together. Just like so. So that's super simple, guys, super easy. And obviously the only thing left to do is just to grab out your herring, just like that. I've had these defrosting for a while, so I'm not ripping scales off. And if you can't notice, I know these are a little bit small, obviously. Um, I've been running a lot of green labels and a lot of red labels on the lake lately. And honestly, they haven't been working so well. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna downsize my bait a little bit. And we're gonna go out there tomorrow and we're gonna give it heck. See if we can't bonk us a nice couple spring chinook before we go down to Drano Lake next week. So I'm super stoked on that, guys. So stay tuned for those videos. Okay, now as simple as one, two, three, just freaking put your lids on, just like that. Okay, give them a little mix. And there you have it, guys. This is a super simple, super easy way just to brine up bait, super fast for your herring. And then also you can use the Pro Cure or Pot Skis all in one where you just dump it in, you throw your herring in. Super simple, super easy. Bite stimulants, it makes the bait last longer in the water. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Let's move on. We're gonna go over a method, a method that people use a lot down on the Rogue River and down in Oregon on the Main Anqua River. And I'm sure a lot of fishermen today still use this method and I grew up using this method. It really gives that bait just a very solid rotation in the water. And let's go over it right now. So the first setup that we have is the bait threaded herring, okay? And this is a sliding mooching rig. As you can see, I'm moving the hook up and down the line just like so. If you would like to learn how to tie up this sliding mooching rig, go over to my channel, Walking on Water, look up the video, how to tie a sliding mooching rig, and you will see exactly how to tie this hook to this line. At the bottom, we just have a, we just tied a simple loop, just like so, and I'm gonna show you why we did that in just one second. We're gonna grab our herring, we're gonna set it down, okay? You're gonna grab a bait threader, just like this one right here, it has a little tiny hole right at the top. You're gonna pinch that loop together. You're gonna to find that hole. And you're gonna slide that loop, if we can possibly get it here with these gloves on. 30 pound fluoro. You're gonna slide that line right into the hole just like that, okay guys? So you simply slide it in just like that. Then you're gonna pop the herring's mouth open and you're gonna slide the bait threader right down the herring, okay? You're sliding the bait threader right down the herring until you get right back to the anal fin of this fish, okay? Right, just like so, like that. You're gonna pop it out just like that. So you pop it out right at the anal fin and you slide the herring down the bait threader itself, okay? Now here comes the important part, right? With bait threaded herring, you can't just grab the end of the line and just rip it through, okay? You have a big, we're using 30 pound leader right here, okay? We're using 30 pound leader right here, and so pulling it down nice and slow and controlled is very important. So we're squeezing the herring with our fingers just like this, okay? And we're working it down. You can see the bump, you can see the bump of the line right there. So we're gonna push the bump of the line down just like that as we slowly pull that out, just like so. Once we get it through, we're gonna hold the line and pull the bait threader off of our line, just like so, okay? Now, what we're gonna do, we have that threaded through the herring. We're gonna grab our trailer hook, just like this one right here. You can use a treble hook. I used to use trebles all the time, but today, for video purposes, I'm gonna use this octopus hook, okay? Okay, so we're gonna grab our hook. We're gonna grab our line. We're gonna pinch that loop together and we're just gonna push it through the eye just like so. And why we made a loop is, we're simply just gonna put the loop over the hook, just like that, 
and then we're gonna suck it down tight just like that. Okay, guys, so no knot needed. It's just a simple slip knot down there at the bottom. And then we're just gonna slowly pull our knot and our loop back into the herring, just like so. We're gonna keep pulling. We're gonna guide the hook into the herring itself, just like so. A lot of scales are coming off these things. Now, as you can see, we have our hook coming straight out of the side of the herring, just like that. And now, why we have the sliding part of this setup is, we're gonna lay this down for a second. We're gonna slide this top hook all the way up until we can get it right where we want it. And then we're gonna go right underneath the jawbone, just like that, right in between. And then you're gonna look to come right out the top of this fish's skull. And there you have it, guys. There, And this is why you honestly use a treble hook at the back. So you have the hook sticking out at all sides. Now, the next step in this process, guys, for the bait threaded herring is you're gonna grab yourself a rubber band. You're gonna turn it in half just like this. You're gonna go up the back of the fish, right over the hook, right down at the bottom, and you're just gonna let it clamp itself down just like that. Okay, so you have one rubber band right back there in the back. You're gonna grab another rubber band and you're gonna go up the herring, right over the head of the fish, right back up over the mouth, just like that, guys. So you have one over the mouth and you have one in the back and then you simply just suck your line down tight until you get to the point where you want it at and that's gonna create that nice bend in that herring so when it's going through the water, you're getting that beautiful rotation. So this is just one way, guys, out of three that I'm gonna show you today on how to set up and rig up herring. Super simple, super easy. And obviously, you can tell these herring are a little slimy. I did not brine these ones up yet. I'm getting ready to go fishing tomorrow, so we have the ones sitting in the brine, but this is exactly how I would bait thread my herring for a Rogue River setup, for trolling. Um, it keeps the bait on the hook for a long time. It's super simple, super easy, and very effective. Let's get into the second method. Now, a lot of people, when they see these, are gonna say, yeah, bait threading is a thing of the past. We're not doing that anymore. And I fully understand that. Bait threading was a thing, definitely a huge thing down in Oregon when I was a kid growing up fishing the Manumqua River and the Rogue River and stuff like that. And I'm pretty positive it's still a very effective method for them down there now because the Rogue River setup with the 3.5 blade and the beads above the herring is just an absolute fun and amazing way to catch fish. So. But this method is simply simple. And this is exactly what it is right here, guys. This is a crippled herring helmet, and you just have a non-slip mooching rig. Again, if you wanna learn how to tie up this mooching rig, go over to my channel, Walking on Water, and you will learn exactly how to tie up this non-slip mooching rig. Then, up top, we have the helmeted herring helmet, the crippled herring helmet, and as well as, there is a video on that on exactly how to rig this helmet specifically, but these are a very effective method. You simply grab a herring, pop it in the helmet just like so, okay? You just slide it right there in the helmet, head first. Grab your pin, little, little, little red pin right here. Then we're just gonna slide it right in. We're gonna find the hole on the other side and we're gonna slide the pin straight through that hole, locking that herring into position, okay? Then we're just gonna simply take our, our top hook here and we're gonna stab it right through the side of the herring just like so. Then we're just gonna pull it down tight. And that is what is gonna give us our bend for this helmet to spin that herring perfectly in the water. This is just another way, guys, to get out in the water and be extremely effective. And I find that these helmets, um, it just makes your, your setup and your change out of baits extremely fast. You pop the pin, you throw another one in, you stab it through, you're done, okay? Super simple, super easy, and a very effective way just to get out of the water and effectively target spring Chinook, and Chinook, summer Chinook, fall Chinook, so on and so forth. Last but not least, guys, is the cut plug herring. Now, the cut plug herring, a lot of people like to eyeball them, but I go with a little cut plug um, guide right here. Um, on this side, you have Chinook. On this side, you have Coho or Silver Salmon. And honestly, I don't think it makes a whole lot of a difference. It's super easy and super simple to use. We're going to go through it right now and show you guys where to set your hooks so you can go out there and effectively catch some big old spring Chinook. All right, guys. So put my little baby herring in there just like that. Okay. Got your herring in there. It doesn't matter if it's at the bottom or the top. 
we're gonna put it, the gill plate, right in front of the guide, okay? So we're putting the gill plate right in front of this guide where we're gonna cut the cut plug itself, okay? Then, we're just gonna grab our knife, okay? And what we're gonna do at first is, we're gonna go slow, slow. Once you feel the backbone, you're gonna pop it through just like that, okay? Now, we have a nice, beautiful angle on this cut plug herring right there like that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna squeeze the guts out, okay? Gonna pop them right back in there. Squeeze the guts out, and why do we squeeze the guts out? When you're fishing cut plug herring, you're usually in some tide, you're usually in some current, you're usually, usually trolling, and so why you get the guts out is so you simply don't just blow the belly of that fish out, which will happen because cut plug herring spins pretty rapidly, right? And when you're getting a nice spin and you have a lot of current, it wants it's pushing current down into that belly. And if there's guts in there, it's just gonna blow that whole belly out and you're gonna have to change your bait because the bait's gonna be blown out from the anal fin all the way to your cut point. So next we're gonna grab our cut plug herring set, like our, our two hooks right here, which is just simply a non-slip mooching rig. And we're gonna go with our trailer hook through the high side belly, okay, through the high side. And when I mean high side, you have the spine right here. Now you can tell that this side right here is longer than this side because we cut at this angle going back down. So this is the high side right here, and this is the low side of the herring. So we're gonna put it through the belly of the high side, just like that. Make sure you don't have any tag ends, guys. No tag ends on your knots because you don't wanna rip the stomach of this, this beautiful cut plug herring out. And you're gonna feed it through the high side. Nice and slow, just like that, okay? So we got that down there like that. Then we're gonna take our top hook, okay? And we're gonna go on the low side of the spine, on the low side of the spine, right up through the top, just like so. So if you can see the hook, we went through the low side, right on the low side, but straight up through the top of that herring, just like that. Then on this side, you can see that we have the trailer hook that's sitting right down at the tail of this cut plug herring, just like that. See it guys right there? And as you can tell, this is a soft herring, so we did get some scale, scales gone. If this was brined up, it would be a 100% different story. But this is the concept of how you're gonna set up and rig your cut plug herring, okay guys? And so all of these, in my opinion, are gonna be trolled behind a triangle flasher. And I love the short buzz triangle flashers. I'll show you guys one here in just a second. So this is how you would rig a cut plug herring for spring Chinook or Chinook salmon, depending on where you're fishing at in the water system. So let's talk about the flashers that you would wanna use. All right, guys, really quick. This is a triangle flasher by Short Bus. If you didn't already know, I mean, very obvious, right? Shape of a triangle. And these just spin through the water just like that. And so this is realistically just giving you a nice flash, giving the fish some instinctual stuff like, oh, fish are feeding, or it just attracts them to look, take a closer look, and they see your bait back there behind this flasher. Whether you're not, you're bait threaded and it's spinning a nice slow rotation, or you um, have the cut plug herring, which is a little bit faster rotation, the triangle flasher is gonna be your go-to that's gonna help you guys get on a lot more fish. All right, guys, so this was another Walking on Water tutorial, just going over and discussing how to set up and better fish herring so you guys can rule out all the variables that are working against you so you guys can be more effective on the water. Now, I know a lot of people are like, oh, wow, this is dumb because I already know all this, but hey, guess what? There's a lot of people out there that don't have this information, and these three methods will 100% guaranteed help you catch a lot more spring, summer, and fall Chinook. So thank you so much for tuning in to this Walking in Water tutorial. I will see you in the next one.